Good morning and welcome everyone. We still have a few people logging in, so we're going to give them a minute or two to get settled and then we'll get underway. Um, so for the people that have already joined, I'm just going to do a quick microphone check. If you can all hear me, just let me know in the chat box there. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So we're just going to give it a, a few minutes for the rest of the attendees to join. Awesome guys, just another minute. Awesome, I think we're ready to go. Thanks everyone for joining us for today's webinar. Today's webinar is being presented by Ingram Micro and R Support. For those of you who are being introduced to R Support for the first time, R Support specializes in remote access tools that can connect you to any devices anywhere. In our current new work environment, it is more important than ever to find ways to communicate and connect remotely. This is true not only for MSPs to support their end users, but also gives their end users remote access tools to use within their own business. So our, web uh, sorry, our webinar today will address some of these challenges that all industries are facing with working from home. And before we get started, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. So today's webinar is being recorded we will be able to share a link with you after the event is completed. We welcome you to revisit the content yourself and share it with your colleagues. And you'll also have the opportunity to um, you know, send us your questions at any time uh, for today's presenters by typing in the chat box on your screen. You can send your questions obviously at any time. Um, we'll collect these and address them during the Q&A section at the end of today's presentation. So just quickly, here is the agenda for today's webinar. So we're gonna be covering just um, how our support, how you can use our support for remote access into more than just your work computers. Um, our support will also be answering, um, you know, your application questions through a short demo, how to order our support through the Ingram Cloud Marketplace and the Q and A section. So today we, we do have two speakers. So there is Jin Lee, who is the solution specialist at R Support, and myself, Daniel Matthijs, um, and, one, and I am the national cloud account manager here at Ingram Micro. I also wanted to point out one more thing before we continue with the webinar. All webinar attendees are eligible for free end user demo licenses please send me an email after the webinar to claim your free licenses. Make sure you save the email address there to claim those free licenses. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand the floor over to Jin Lee. Over to you, Jin. Um, all right. Let me just move to... All right, thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. That was great. Um, all right. Uh, Following the previous webinars we had before um, about remote call and remote view, um, we have received many questions and feedback uh, from different resellers. 
So we wanted to take this opportunity to share them and answer the question that the reseller made uh, during offline meetups. Um, we believe there will be more questions after this one. And we, of course, we welcome uh, all of them and any question um, that you might have. So just let us know. Um, you have the other email to contact us. So just you know, uh, send them, send them to, to us. All right. So um, first question. We have over uh, 50 devices, mainly PC. We need to monitor them and connect remotely if needed. Um, but we cannot have them connected uh, all the time. Connected or all the time or oh, check it oh, one check by one. Check it one by one. So, so the question, the question is, is, um, um, is there a is way, there to, way to, to look at it from one from one screen? Um, just a, a little bit just of a, a, a little bit of a. Egg. There we go. Um, so yes, the answer is remote view, um, and within the remote view, there's a feature called live view. Um, with this option, you can uh, preview devices without connection. Um, the screen refreshes automatically every five seconds. You can uh, view and manage devices in group. Um, also, uh, proactively support uh, with additional room for extra revenue for the resellers. I'll show you that how that works. Um, now, unfortunately, this works only for PCs, so that goes for Windows and uh, Mac uh, devices. So, here's the remote view console page with the devices from the account. Um, they are grouped under a group called New Jersey. So. Uh, you can group them for different groups. Uh, each group will be accessible for uh, different users, but, but we'll go over that uh, a little bit later. So this screen uh, refreshes every five seconds. So you can have a quick glimpse of uh, what's going on on each PC. To enlarge, um, all you need to do is just click on uh, one of the other icons here, and it will give you a pop-up screen uh, with a larger view. Uh, from this, if you want to uh, connect to this device, you can just double click on it, enter the access account and just get connected. This is a great way to uh, monitor because um, it's not actually connected to the device, but it's grabbing the screens uh, from the remote PC using uh, the agent application. So this saves, of course, the bandwidth and it's great if you need to just look at the screen what's going on to make sure that everything Okay, so let's go. Let's go. Um, we have over 50, 50 devices, mainly PC, in different locations. Is there a way to install the remote control program and add them to the account quickly and in a uniform way? Uh, in Remote View, we have an option for Generate Installer. So, just to go a little bit uh, back to the history, uh, we have supplied Remote View. Uh, mainly to larger enterprises. Um, and usually, uh, they need to manage over hundreds or even uh, thousands of PCs and servers. So uh, it would take weeks to go to each PC, open the page, uh, log in, and install the agent one by one. So it, it was very uh, natural and very uh, basic to ask uh, for this option uh, from the very beginning. So uh, with, option, with this option, you can create an installer from the admin PC, so the PC where you'll be controlling the devices. Uh, you can download and distribute the, the EXE file or uh, send a download link to the user so that they can install it themselves. Um, you will have a pre-filled ID and password that's gonna allow the user to just press next 
during the installation. They don't need to really uh, enter anything, just press next, next and done. The installer will have an expiration date so that uh, other people cannot abuse uh, the tool. And of course, the silent installation uh, with switches using the other uh, command line prompt. So, first, uh, press the general installer option from the remote view console. Um, this will give you the, the menu. Now, select the option if the, uh, if the installation will be preferred with online access, meaning that if the PC is going to be connected to the internet, uh, then select online. Um, or if not, uh, select offline. If the installation is offline, then the PC will be available for connection on the next um, next connection to the internet uh, where the PC is going to be. Um, this is required so that the agent installed on that PC gets registered to the server uh, online. Next, enter the IBM password. This will be the uh, this will be the common uh, to all the PCs that the installer going to be used. Uh, of course, you can create multiple installers or multiple groups uh, with different ID and password. Uh, last, set the uh, installer's expiration date. This will present um, from being used uh, after the end of set date. So um, this installer will be available to be installed only to that date past that, uh, it, it's not going to work. Um, this is a, a security measure so that if somebody uh, gets uh, hands uh, over this installer, uh, still they won't be able to use it after that date. Um, last, once uh, you fill the all the information, press the uh, generate agent installation file, and that will give you two options, uh, download and copy link. So download will download the installer file directly. Uh, so you can just save it uh, locally, have it on a USB, and or just um, attach it on the other email and then uh, share it to um, other users. Or you can use it uh, to push it uh, through the other uh, network using the uh, the standard install. Or of course you can use the um, uh, copy link to just copy the link and then uh, paste it on an email and then send it over. Uh, to different users. If you're performing a network push, then use the standard installation argument through the, uh, the command line, just as in here, with the slash s, uh, slash p, and slash qn. All right, next. Um, now, I'm going to go a little bit fast because uh, we have quite a few questions about all 10. So, and we had more, but we couldn't cover everything for this one. So we try to uh, make it as, uh, as important ones first uh, as possible. Um, all right, so next question. We are a small company, a small support team, and most often a support agent needs to connect with multiple customers or multiple devices. Is there a tool that allows multiple connection from a single PC? Um, the answer is yes. Um, remote call can store up to five different sessions from a single login. Each session becomes a connection with a remote device. I have not included remote view uh, because remote view is licensed for PC, which means that uh, you can connect with all the PCs that you have purchased and listed uh, on the account all at the same time if you wish to. Um, of course, as long as your network can uh, cope with them. Um, but in reality, supporting over three devices at, at the same time is, is kind of rare uh, and it's pretty tough because you have to you know, multitask between three windows. Uh, but it does occur and of course, no, no call can handle them. So um, here is the uh, agent program with a single login. So when I press the start button, it will launch a viewer. Uh, with the session code inside. Uh, now, this is one connection to one device. Now, you can press the start button again. It will show another window uh, with a different code. This code is randomly generated for each connection, so it cannot be repeated. And when I press another start, I have another window with another code, which becomes another connection. 
Right, next question. Um, we have a remote connection tool on our PC, but if the customer has the same tool on their PC with their account, then it makes it difficult to connect with us. Is there a way to connect with them without modifying the current settings? Um, this was a case presented by a reseller on an actual support scenario. So uh, it was supporting a customer remotely, and he needed to connect to another remote device from the customer PC. Uh, since the login was already done on the reseller side, uh, he could not do it on the customer side. He needed an alternative tool. So we suggested using the remote call. Um, so remote call is <clears throat> can be considered as a separate tool for those unexpected situations. Um, there's no conflict between the same application. Um, it's a one-time, it uses the one-time connection code, so it leaves absolutely no footprint behind. All the files that gets downloaded or diffused, it gets all deleted. So there's no conflict in that. Um, and there's really nothing to install. It just download the EXE and just run it. It's not an uh, installation per se. All right. Uh, as you can see, other programs uh, going through other programs uh, uh, through each other, it just does not work. Uh, but with remote code, we have a problem that. Um, here's another um, similar situation. So, customer receives support on their office PC from the IT team. Um, the service provider had to install their application uh, uh, to the uh, remote PC and they left it logged in for. Uh, next time they need to connect with. But after the connection, after the customer set up his uh, own application, uh, I mean, with his account to connect to the office PC from uh, from his home, you know, because now you know, work from home uh, is sort of a requirement. Um, so because now the office PC is logged in with the customer account, the IT team could not connect anymore because um, it's on a different account. Um, we suggested that uh, there will be no issue with remote call as it does not uh, leave any program installed. Uh, even um, there was a similar question that's gonna come up next where uh, you can even share the same connection or same PC at the same time. All right, next question. Uh, we have very customers uh, that we manage uh, their PC. Some of them can be accessed at any time, but some requires the approval. How can we do this? All right. So this is a very common question that we get all the time. Uh, so, but it takes a bit of effort to make the difference. We clearly made a separate tool for each situation, as we believe they belong to a different support scenario, a support needs, basically. Remote call is used to provide unattended support. So it requires the customer approval and they need to enter a connection code uh, to get connected and to take control. Remote view is used to provide unattended support. So that means you can access it at any time as needed without, um, without the customer being present on the other side to approve the connection. Uh, the main difference is the interaction with the customer. So with remote call, customer must enter the randomly generated six-digit code to get connected. So as long as customer does not enter it, you won't get connected. So that's another uh, security feature. Um, there's no other way. So, oh, no, no, actually, yes, there is. Uh, we have an option where the code is generated on the customer side and the support agent need to enter it. So it works backward. Um, this was quite um, useful when we were connecting with um, glasses, the VR glasses, where um, it's very hard to type anything on the glass. So you can go and launch an app, um, that's fine. But actually entering the code was a little bit difficult on the on the other uh, VR glass. So we reverse the, the process 
So now the code is generated on the glass side. The code is passed to the support agent. And now the support agent needs to enter the codes uh, to establish a connection. Uh, so yes, it, bo it works uh, both ways. All right. Um, go to the remote view. Uh, in the case of remote view, uh, you will have the list of available PCs. Just double click, enter the ID and password, and you are connected. Uh, the ID and password, it could be one that um, you set it up just uh, by yourself, or you can use the, uh, the Windows credentials on the remote PC, uh, or uh, two step verification using the, uh, the Google OTP as well. Um, there's no customer side intervention. Uh, it is used to monitor and access online devices such as servers, uh, digital signage, uh, kiosks, uh, and so on. All right, next question. Um, we need to keep a record of all connections, but is there a way to record the entire session rather than um, reading a, a text log? Um, yes, of course, uh, there is. Uh, in remote call, um, all sessions can be recorded into a proprietary format. Uh, it can be only play, it's playable only with the remote, the Arsopor player, uh, that's for security purpose. Recording can be first uh, to be done for every session. Uh, it cannot be controlled by the support agent. This is optional. Uh, we can set it up so that the support agent can start the record whenever they want, or we can force them to have them all recorded. Um, this was said as an option because there was cases um, where the support agent purposely uh, did not record the session um, to, uh, <laughs> to avoid the blame, basically. Uh, so the management decided, uh, OK, that's not going to happen anymore. We're going to record everything. And we're going to force it so that they won't be able to change it. That is possible. It's, it's uh, within the option. Uh, it's all up to you. Um, the default is saved to the local PC, but optionally, it can be stored on a centralized network location. Uh, it could be a, a network drive. It could be a, a Dropbox drive. Uh, where you can share it later with other people. Um, same idea, you can do it on a Google Drive as well. Uh, or um, you can have a separate recording server, a recording storage server on the cloud as well. Um, for remote view, session can be recorded for evidence and for history. Uh, I've seen some people who actually uh, recorded to be used for as a training material as well. So in both remote call and remote view, you will find the record button uh, at the bottom of at the bottom right corner of the viewer. Uh, just click on the record and it will just start recording. Simple as that. Um, recorded video will be oops. Uh, recorded video will be saved in a format called RSFX, and this can be only play with uh, our own player, uh, which comes uh, with the uh, the application when you install it. All right, next question. Um, is there a way to connect the same customer PC or device at the same time? So uh, this is basically answering the question that we had uh, before. And yes, um, we, of course, we often encounter a situation where um, additional support is needed uh, when solving the problem. Um, both remote call and remote view offer uh, ability to allow multiple users connect to the same PC or device. Um, remote call allows session sharing, so it will share the actual session uh, with other users. Session transfer uh, among users of the, the same group and they, they allow view and control, both of them. Remote view as well, but uh, remote view works with invite by email. So you'll be inviting other users to join the connection via a URL sent by email. 
again, uh, it allows both view and control. So here's the screen to share a session uh, in remote call. Uh, when the option is selected, you will have the list of available support agents. These agents must be within the same group and they must be logged in, of course. Uh, so once the request is sent to the user, uh, they will see a little uh, pop-up uh, at the bottom of the screen. And all they need to do is just uh, click on it and get connected. Also, uh, within the uh, the agent program, they will see the request sitting uh, on the side so that they can uh, click and join as well if they miss the other pop-up, of course. Um, this agent must be uh, same group, yes. Um, same goes for the uh, session transfer where you can transfer it to another uh, agent. For example, uh, this is most often used to escalate uh, within the, the tiers where the first tier will support, uh, will get connected. But uh, since there's a limited tools that they can use, uh, they can escalate it to the uh, next tier. Uh, without losing the connection, because once you lose the connection, you have to ask the customer again, can you uh, do the whole uh, connection process uh, again, and so on. So with this option, you do not need to do that. Uh, of course, when sharing the, uh, the same PC, both uh, agent uh, can control the device. All right, uh, remove view. You have an option called invite via email using under the control tools. Um, to do this, uh, you must be connected to the PC uh, or the device first and then send the invite. Um, next question, uh, my customer provides support to mobile devices, which OS is supported? Um, Remote call can connect with Android devices running OS version 5.0 and later. Uh, it's very rare to see those um, old devices, but we do know that it's out there. Uh, so yes, 5.0 and up. Devices from manufacturers such as uh, Samsung, LG, Huawei, um, and more like uh, Sony, they are all compatible with remote call. But, uh, because there are too many variations, different model, uh, version, uh, even by region, even the same model, same version, it's different uh, by region, uh, difference in the hardware. So uh, there's too many variations with Android. So we really recommend um, testing it first before actually getting connected if possible. Uh, we also support iOS devices running OS version 11 and up. Uh, not that iOS devices must be have the AirPlay enabled to get the, uh, the full screen view. Uh, iOS does not offer control. It's a view of the screen. Next question. Um, we are resellers. Yes, uh, we would like to purchase licenses and sell it to our customers. Of course, we need to manage, uh, manage the licenses for them. Do you have a solution for this? Uh, we believe Revolveo is a service designed to be used by the resellers. So, uh, and we usually uh, call them partners. Uh, so Revolveo allows you to create unlimited groups and users. So that gives you a sort of an idea how to uh, group the customers. So each group can be the customer uh, for example customer a or group a multiple user can be assigned to view and control only the allowed groups multiple device can be assigned uh, to that group so if a customer a has multiple computer you can assign them uh, to that group reseller uh, will be the super user that manages all the devices all the groups and the users uh, reseller purchases the devices, so the license goes per device, and the customer will pay for the account and the devices that they will have access to. So let me just quickly show you this. Um, so the, ser the service will have a three type of structure where uh, there is a reseller here on the top, 
or the account owner, and there will be multiple customers under that uh, grouped, grouping uh, each devices uh, that will belong to that group. So here's the little uh, process, just add a new group uh, with the name of the customer. Next, add a manager to that group, which is normally uh, the, the customer itself. Uh, so the customer will be logging in with this uh, user ID and password. And because they log in with their ID, they will be able to see only those groups in PC assigned uh, to them. Uh, as, a, as a manager, customer can log in to view his ID and view and access the devices only within the group. Uh, next, to limit the manager and allow the access, I'll set the permission. And last, add the PC that the customer uh, uh, the customer is uh, assigned to the, uh, the PCs, to the group. And you, as the administrator, you can always check the group properties uh, and make any changes as required. All right, next question. Um, is there a way to connect with a customer without installing the application? Uh, what is the web viewer option? Well, uh, for the last years, um, we offer the service, the remote support service, uh, through Windows application only. The main reason for this uh, was that because of security and performance. So earlier version of browsers, uh, we're talking about pretty much uh, the Internet Explorer 7, 8, uh, or even, even prior to that. Um, they were not secure. And they constantly presented flow uh, and they were exposed to uh, external attack and they always require different patches. Uh, we know that ActiveX is gone and that was a big um, security hole. Uh, so after that, the HTML5 came out, which didn't exist before. Uh, but with the uh, uh, with the HTML5 technology, uh, security got better. Uh, pretty much, they, they improved a lot. Uh, browser got secure. Uh, ActiveX is not used anymore. JavaScript is not used anymore. Uh, it's it has the option to to block them as well. So uh, because now there are uh, many more secure and uh, offer great greater performance. So we made the next move uh, and we made it available uh, completely uh, from the browser, uh, more specifically from Chrome browser. So for remote call, uh, you'll be logging into the remote call.io. You're gonna start a session, view, control, and um, remote device from the browser. The good points, is that it requires no installation because it's all done from the browser. Uh, it does not require any PC application and no mobile app either. But uh, the bad is that it still uh, cannot cover all the features that the PC application offer. It has all the basics. Uh, you can control, uh, you can view, you can draw, uh, you can capture the screen. Um, and so on. But it's not as complete as PC application. So we are working uh, and updating the uh, the service uh, as we speak. Um, the developers are doing it. Um, remote view. Uh, Web viewer uses a different engine uh, for even for remote call. Uh, it improves the, uh, the transfer of frequently moving images. Uh, we simply call it a video. So uh, you're gonna, I'm gonna show you a video uh, in the couple of next slides, but uh, you're gonna see that the, the performance is, uh, is much better. And it, it, best, um, it can be best used for like, you know, 3D application, uh, video reviews, uh, or like you know, remote security. All right. All right, so first, open the website, the ANC.remoteCore.io. Uh, 
So login uh, using the usual ID and password. Uh, press start uh, to open up a, a new tab or the session code. Now that becomes the other browser. Now on the customer side, request the customer to open the website anz.113366.io. Um, request, them, request them to enter the connection code uh, from the other uh, the previous uh, slides on the support agent side. And press OK. Um, now that will download a small file. And all they need to do just click and run the file. And that's done. You are now connected, as you can see here on both screen. As for remote view, it's even, even simpler. Uh, just log into the management console right click on the pc uh, to get connected and uh, select the web viewer enter the id and password access id and password and that's done you're connected so this is much simpler and much faster way to do it uh, oh okay let me just quickly share a video showing the uh the performance difference Right, so um, the PC, the laptop on the left hand side, it's the um, the controlling PC, and the right hand side PC is the remote PC. Uh, so as you can see, basically there's no difference in between them. Uh, the performance has improved quite a lot uh, using this technology. So if you are to um, uh, view uh, effectively moving images, and uh, definitely this is the option for you. All right, so next question. Um, we need to send out a junior technician to the field, uh, to the customer side. Uh, we'll need to support him remotely, but the only way to know the status of what, what he's doing uh, is by talking on the phone. Is there a way to visualize the problem talk with the junior and indicate um, a, a solution for them. So we we all had that question uh, when we do the remote support. How do we support if we cannot connect to the device? Um, do we need to go to the site? Um, is that the only way? Uh, so the answer is no. Um, use what we intended was, okay, since because you cannot connect it, cannot connect to the device, uh, at least can you, um, is there a way to see the device and what the problem is? Because uh, first asking the customer to describe all what's going on uh, is gonna take forever. And that usually takes the support time over 10, 20, uh, half an hour. Even for that. So, um, the service you need to offer uh, a support to a non-connected device uh, examining the physical part of the problem, uh, probably because you cannot see the inside, uh, and you want to even uh, use it and leave a recorded evidence of the remote site at home. So, remote code visual tag. Uh, is able to connect to the uh, junior's uh, phone camera or the customer phone camera. Uh, you will see what junior is seeing or what the customer is seeing. Um, there is a VOIP option within the app so that you can uh, talk and look at the problem at the same time. Uh, so the phone call can be uh, 
dropped right after the connection and use the VOIP option. Uh, you can use the draw option to actually mark on the screen um, of the problem. And of course, use the, the recall option to <laughs> recall the session as an uh, AVI file. Uh, and as mentioned before, this can be forced or can be started automatically. Right. So this is the actual screen uh, when we have the spray uh, will see. And this is uh, what the customer device uh, will be seeing. And actually, since I think we have about um, five minutes. So let me just quickly give you a demo of the actual app, how it works. And, uh, so it will be great since, um, okay, uh, since we talked about the, the web viewer, uh, try the connection through the web viewer. So I have logged in okay, and I have the connection code right here. And this is what my device is, uh, looks like. So on the device, I'm going to launch the uh, browser. So I'm going to just open up a new tab and go to the website that shows up in here. In my case, it's 11336.io. Uh, for the, uh, the Australian um, region, we have a dedicated uh, URL as well. It's called uh, amz.11336.io. Uh, I'm going to go to the visual support. So far, I have zero installation uh, of the app or anything. It's just all through the browser. So I'm going to enter the code. Of course, in the actual connection, uh, the code will be entered by the customer and get connected. So once you are connected, you're going to see uh, on the left hand side is the screen that I'll be seeing to support. And the uh, right hand side is the actual device that the customer will be seeing. Uh, you're gonna see different options uh, such as uh, rotate the screen to rotate the camera. Uh, I'm gonna press cancel on this. Uh, you can turn on the flashlight if you need to uh, see some dark sides or even at the basement uh, where it's kind of dark. Uh, you can turn on the light for the customer. Um, you can scan the barcode and read the information uh, instead of the, uh, asking the customer to read it for you. Uh, and by the way, it reads um, QR code as well. So I'm trying to scan the code. All right, and this is um, well. It, it basically depends on the other uh, camera as well, but you can see uh, small details in um, very clearly. All right. Uh, once we are done, um, you can also give the direction uh, to the agent. Uh, the support agent give the direction to the customer. Uh, can you move a little bit up, uh, a little bit down, uh, further, closer, and you, you can give different directions uh, to the customer. Um, also, you can draw on the screen to say, okay, um, do you see here? This is the problem. It captures the screen. Or uh, this is the information that you're going to need uh, to get the other further support and so on. So drawing on the screen is available uh, for this. Uh, voice chat, as mentioned, capture screen. Uh, barcode history, this is the information that we read before uh, by scanning the barcode. Uh, and create support reports and so on. So as I mentioned, uh, the, the uh, web version is um, is limited uh, in terms of options. It has only the basics. 
but it will offer uh, more as we uh, as we update the uh, the service. Let me go back. We have slides. Um, okay, so we went through the uh, the questions. Um, prepare for this webinar. Um, if uh, we don't have more, of course, so hopefully we can have another session uh, in the future and provide you with more answers. All right, so that's it for me. Now uh, let me pass it back to uh, Daniel. Daniel. Awesome. Thanks, Jin. Wonderful presentation there. Sorry about the audio issues earlier, guys. Technology can be temperamental sometimes. If there is a slide that you're unclear about or had any questions about, let us know and we can get Jin to answer that for you. And um, yeah, so just conscious of time, I'll quickly go through the order process for the Ingram Cloud Marketplace. Uh, thanks for that, Jin. Um, so yeah, I'll just take five minutes through um, the order process there and then we'll answer your questions at the end of this webinar. So to get to the Ingram Cloud Marketplace, simply search for au.cloud.im, bookmark this page on your browser, and to log in, uh, log in with the I am online uh, button there. As you can see, all our support plans are located under the communication and collaboration tab. In this example, um, I'm going to show you the order process for um, our support remote call. After I've selected the Ask Support Remote Call option there, um, it's taken me to this page. If you aren't already logged into um, the marketplace, you won't see this Buy Now button. Um, so yeah, please log in and then you'll be able to see this Buy Now button, which will take you to the Ingram Cloud Marketplace, um, so the, the new interface there. After I've selected um, the, the, the Ask Support Remote Call, um, the the previous interface we were navigating through was the old panel. Now, this is the new interface that most partners should be already working with. In this example, I'm going to add the remote call PC and mobile support to the cart. Um, this subscription is a yearly subscription, if you guys can see that there. Um, and you can see how much margin you make from MSRP. Your cost price over here is charged to you and is XGST. Once added to my cart, my cart will populate here. Um, with the new license, I'm gonna hit the art icon to continue to the next step. If you wish to add more licenses to this order, simply hit the plus icon there. And just quickly, I'm gonna point out the wizard on the left-hand side over here. As you can see, um, this is a four-step order process. It is a fairly quick order process here. And I uh, also want to point out the quote um, button here. So if you wish to prepare a quote for your customer, which will quote MSRP, obviously, you'll, you will have the ability to um, you know, prepare a quote, brand it with your own logo, and send it out to your customer. We won't go through that process right now um, on how to prepare a quote in this demo. However, it is a pretty neat feature in the marketplace to save you time preparing your own quote. I'm going to hit next, which will um, take me to the next step there. Now, you'll need to select the customer to order the, the licenses for. So, for example purposes, I've selected uh, Test IM. Um, I'm going to select that customer there. And yeah, obviously, if, if, if it's a new customer, you'll need to add um, you know the customer's details there. Um, I'm going to hit next to go to the Next step of the order process. Now, there are a few parameters you'll need to complete here. The top field request for um, your customer's R support user ID. You can create any uh, user ID. However, R support recommends having your company name as your user ID. Now, the bottom field here is if you're an existing R support user already. So if you do have an ID, you can purchase licenses for your existing R support tenancy there. Hit next to proceed to the final step of the order process. So this will take you to the review screen. It's obviously the last um, step in the order process there. Um, so you can check out if you've um, 
you know, ordered the right licenses, if you agree with the pricing there, um, scroll to the bottom of the page here. And all you need to do is tick the box, um, you know, agree with the TNCs, hit buy, and your order should provision within the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, yeah, so obviously, whatever email that you have on the marketplace, they will receive the welcome email, and your order should provision um, obviously within 24 to 48 hours. Um, and yeah, that was. Um, essentially the order process that wraps up the order process there and um, yeah just wrapping up this webinar here so here's your R support team at Ingram Microcloud and obviously R support Jin Lee who spoke earlier here are his contact details here his, he is one of the solution specialists at R support if you have any technical questions need any help with the subscription at all, um, and deployment things like that please feel free to reach out to Jin Lee. And I also want to point out um, the channel manager here in Australia, Jim Pa. So he is based here in Australia and um, he is always excited to meet partners, host presentations for yourself and your customers. And he is frequently traveling around um, Australia. And having said that, Jim is planning to visit Queensland this year. Um, more specifically Brisbane and the Gold Coast on the 22nd and the 23rd of April and also Melbourne on the 6th and the 7th of May this year. So if you guys wish to have a presentation around our support, please feel free to um, you know, reach out to Jim Park and he'll be happy to organize a presentation for yourself or your customer there. And obviously, um, just the contacts at Ingram Micro, myself here, National Cloud Account Manager, and Tasha Soltanovic, she's the vendor onboarding manager here at Ingram Micro Cloud. Feel free to reach out to Tasha. Um, second point of contact here at Ingram Micro, if you do have any questions around um, our support. And again, just a quick reminder to all the webinar attendees here, uh, make sure you send me an email to claim your free licenses. I think it's 100 free end user demo licenses. So Obviously, you know, try it before you buy it, see if you enjoy the product um, and yeah, send me an email and we can organize those licenses for you. So it looks like we, uh, we did have some questions in the chat box here. Um, let me quickly read the questions. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to type them in now and we'll get through as many questions as possible. Okay, so we do have a question here from Philip Jew. Can our support product be used by our customers for remote one-on-one -on -one connection to their work PC rather than me as an MSP needing the one-to-many support connections? Jen, I think that's a question for you there. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it was um, very shortly, uh, briefly mentioned on previous slides. Um, yes, and you can do that. And what's more, um, as I mentioned, you can, uh, the reseller uh, or your customer can purchase directly, but um, a reseller can purchase it and then uh, create groups for that user so that they can connect to uh, their own PC and so on, um, and charge uh, for that and create an extra uh, revenue on it. But, uh, if that's not the case, then um, you can always purchase it for the customer, pass the account, and they can connect it uh, to their home PC or whichever PC they want to uh, connect to and, and use the service. Yes. Awesome. Thanks for that, Jin. Um, obviously, you've ran past this in your presentation slide, but we did have a question here. How easy is it for a non-technical person to set up our support? Well, um, with the, um, well, I'll, I'll be very honest, okay. We all have installed uh, an application in Windows, but some people even find that difficult. So uh, with the web viewer option, uh, that even uh, a problem anymore because there's really nothing to install. So uh, basically it requires go to the website, uh, log in, enter your ID and password, uh, and press start. That's it. On the customer side, go to the website, enter, type in a six-digit code, 
and just click on the downloaded file. That's it. Um, so uh, it cannot be easy, easier than this. Uh, we have uh, always tried our best to uh, make it as simple as possible. The UI and the actual user experience, uh, we try to um, make it as easy as possible. So um, even even um, uh, even a non uh, technical uh, person can always you know follow and install the application without any problem at all. Awesome, thanks for that, Jin. Another question here. So with remote view in the customer tree structure model, can you limit one user to only see their work PC? and not all the PCs belonging to the customer to reduce confusion for the end user. Another question from Philip Jew there. Um, yeah, absolutely. So the permission uh, can go to the actual group itself so that uh, when you are assigned uh, permission to see the group, that means that you'll be able to see all the PCs within the group. But you don't want that. You want just only one specific PC. Then you can specify uh, the group first, and then uh, specify which PC uh, under that user, and assign the uh, the view and control permission. That uh, what makes it uh, when the user logs in with their IDM password uh, on the list of PC, all they're gonna see is that single PC that they are uh, that they have been assigned to be able to view and control. So they won't even, not even access, they won't be able to see the other ones at all. Awesome, thanks for that, Jin. And there's another question here. How does our support stack up against other remote so software solutions like you know, TeamViewer in terms of features and benefits? Is there any difference at all? Um, okay, so, I mean, yeah, that's that's a question that I, uh, you know, that I get all the time. Probably even you know other competitors will get all the time. You know, what what makes your product you know better uh, than the others? And to be very honest, uh, and actually this is kind of the answer that I give all the time. Feature-wise, um, or at least the basic uh, features, uh, there's no there's not much of a difference. I mean. They both allow you to control the PC. They both allow you to uh, uh, see the screen, transfer files, uh, take screen capture. I mean, those are the, the very basics. Um, but what it differs is, um, first, do you have a server in your region so that it gives you the best performance? Uh, some companies they do not. They only have, um, yeah, we have one in a, in a very strategical area in Asia, and uh, will you know service you know different countries. Yeah, but do you have one in Australia? And our answer is yes. We have a dedicated server in Australia. Uh, to be honest, others I do not think so. Um, do you have any other option of deploying the product? Is that uh, the cloud version only? Because you know, for security reason, we need to have um, other options as well. Um, other companies, yeah, I'm sorry, we only have uh, the cloud version. Uh, you will have to use our service uh, in the cloud. Our answer is uh, no, you can have an in-house uh standalone deployment for your establishment only and that will uh, be in close to your own network and that's it nobody will, will touch it we do have that option um do you need a quick deployment option but not in the cloud we have the appliance option so um we also for as a company we go from uh servers standalone servers to all the way to the complete cloud version. So we cover all of them uh, for whatever uh, your needs are. Um, and last, of course, is the uh, the, the licensing. Um, we believe remote call uh, is more about the user, about the other support agent. Therefore, 
uh, we charge by the support agent or per seat, uh, we say. Um, as for the remote view goes, we charge uh, per device. So it doesn't matter how many users, how many customers you have, you just pay for the devices that you need to manage. And that's it. So that will be the, the, the main difference uh, between the competitor and Osper products. Great, thanks for that, Jin. We've got a few more questions here. So one from Mick Lee. Does the customer side need admin rights to install the exe file no again um here's the other thing it's not an installation uh the exe file um is just uh, you know uh, running oh hold on are we talking about the remote view exe file so um uh, the so let, let's make you know, uh, this question two parts one if you're talking about the uh, installation exe file so so the installer uh, yes you do need to have the admin right uh, because it gets registered as a service so that uh, when the pc restarts you need to restart with the pc so it gets registered as a service um, if you're talking about the exe file to get connected with remote call then no it's not an installer it's just an exe file you just run it and it will uh, do the rest. It will download the, uh, the required files, the modules, and so on. And then it will automatically delete them back. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Jin. Um, we've got another question here, but this might actually be a question for Jim Park. So, um, question from Chris Molly to replace TeamViewer licenses with three agents. Which license would you recommend? So, I'll answer that for you, Chris. Um, I'll go back to the previous slide so you can save Jim Park's um, contact details. So feel free to reach out to Jim Park to find out which licenses you need to replace um, your existing team viewer licenses with, and he can provide you with the correct license, like for like licenses um, based on your requirements there. Awesome, and I think those are all the questions you have today. Uh, I'm just going to leave it to the slide here just to remind everyone to claim those free demo licenses. But again, if you guys do have any questions for our support or the Ingram Micro Cloud team, feel free to reach out to any of us and we'll be ha happy to support you, um, you know, with your R support and, you know, Cloud Marketplace questions there. Um, and yeah, just to wrap up this, this webinar here, thanks again to everyone who's joined the webinar. Um, we really appreciate your time. Thanks again to Jin Lee. Great presentation, and thanks for your insight and expertise. Jin Lee, was there anything else you want to add to the webinar, or did you want to wrap this up here? Um, no, uh, that would be it. That was great. Uh, my only thing is um, we have so many more questions and feedback from the uh, resellers and from the uh, offline meetup. So uh, hopefully we can have uh, another webinar to answer more questions and of course if you have more always you know uh, you're welcome to you know send them to to me or to daniel um or even jim just you know uh, get it get it to us <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so more questions the better um but yeah no thanks again for everyone who's attended the webinar we'll send you uh, a webinar follow-up shortly um you know once we have all of that ready um, but yeah again if you have any questions at all feel free to reach it out uh, reach out to us um but yeah thanks again for your time everyone we'll catch you again soon